Welcome back to another Get Geekish podcast. I'm Bino. That's Derek over there. Thank you for joining us once again and always. How you doing down there, Derek? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. One of them. and a half shell. Turtle power. The catchiest theme songs ever written is that one right there. Mm. Uh, we're talking Ninja Turtles today. Why? Because there was some big news a few weeks back of a brand new, uh, in parentheses, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video game coming out. It's the Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. They uh, made the announcement in early February that it, it's going to be a classic side-scrolling brawler game, just like the old Ninja Turtles arcade games of old. And they released some gameplay footage, about a minute, minute of gameplay footage. And it is amazing. If you liked the Turtles at all, if you ever put a quarter in Ninja Turtles the arcade game, this game's probably going to be right down your alley. And they release some of the characters. You have all four turtles, but you can also play as Splinter and even as April O'Neil. I mean, I guess you could play as April in the arcade cabinet, right? Uh, maybe the very new ones, but the old ones, she was never playable. She was always the kidnapped heroine in distress you had to go save. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. So, I mean, that was a quarter eater. But, I mean, the, the video game industry has been playing heavily on nostalgia lately. Kind of like what we talk about is... It knows. Like, you know, there's been Mega Man newer ones of those with the side scrolling that went back to that. They've also been like, what, Metro, uh, Metroid, the new one, kind of went back to the side scrolling. So they're, mm -hmm. they're, they know what they're doing. They're, they're playing on, like, hey, these guys have money and they played these games growing up. Let's get them. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I fall right in that demographic. I've been talking about that. I know I've mentioned that to you for years that I still really enjoy some of the old classic side scrolling stuff. Like, when all the 3D games started coming around back in the PlayStation 2 days, you know, things was Virtua Fighter and all the 3D was just starting to come around. One of my favorite games at that time was still the old Castlevania Symphony of the Night because that mm -hmm. side-scrolling animation was just, I. That's this is what I love. I love these. And so, you know, if you get a chance, we'll, we'll post the the link to the trailer for this new Ninja Turtles game up with the trailer. Uh, but it's, it's fantastic. You, you mentioned the nostalgia right on the point, and... I was reading through some of the comments on the YouTube video and somebody else made a point on there that was a great idea. This is how a lot of these retro games should be treated. I'm not going to make any radically drastic changes to it. Just going to take the old games everybody loved, give it a new story, give them some graphic updates, make them prettier, add a few new features, and let people enjoy it. Like, well, it's not even like graphic updates, right? It's just fixing some of the pixels. It's like some of the pixelation, and you know, because I mean... Well, that's what they've, they boot up because before it was the best they could do. And now instead of calling it something that's, you know, pixelated or not realistic, now it's referred to as pixel art. Mm -hmm. So updated pixel art in all the games, which, you know, it's a, it's a thing. But they just make it so it's much more smoother. Because, I mean, how many times did you play one of the old Ninja Turtle RT games, especially when they got ported to the home systems, when there'd be random glitches where if you stood on the trash can and left side, then three little lines would go across the screen, or if there was too many bad guys at once, everything kind of flashed red and froze for a minute between punches and all kinds of random stuff. So Because of the stuff. system lag? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I did a little research on some of this company because I never heard of it. It's put together by a company called Dotemu? Dotemu? I'm probably butchering how to actually say that. Uh, but they're a French video game company, and that's what their whole uh, game plan is, is to re-release old games people loved on new systems and create games that are like the old games for the new systems, too. Because, I mean, they've already... We, I, I figure we could go through some of the history of the Turtles video games because they've been through a lot, but uh, a lot of the Turtles games end up just rehashing themselves. Mm -hmm. which is a kind of rough because they were they were one of the biggest franchises of the you know, the 90s probably I would guess but uh, they had a lot of video games they realized I hadn't played a lot of them because they started with the original Nintendo Entertainment System game Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in 1989 possibly is, one of the hardest games ever I was going to say that that game was hard <laughs> it was so I mean th that's the thing too is like back in the, we've talked about that back in the 80s and the 90s they made games hard because they could only be so long so they made it unbearably hard in some parts to where the point where some people hadn't even seen the end of this what a, like a two hour three hour game because they get stuck in that one spot mm -hmm. and, and, and we all we all knew we all knew at least one person that could actually get through that water level with the electric seaweed <laughs> without getting hurt oh, 
but I'm fairly certain that level in the original Ninja Turtles game probably led to tens of thousands of Nintendo controllers being smashed through walls. <laughs> or or something something along those lines, yeah. That's not a... The, the game is fun, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it was fun because it was the Ninja Turtles, but if you broke it down being if this is just the game, you're like, I, this is... I, this is impossible. I don't like this anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the next game they did it right came out with the arcade game, and it was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game, which, of course, is what we all fell in love with. You could play uh, up to four people, all four turtles in that game, side scroll action, and it was a quarter stealer, but it was one of those games if you had three or four friends that you were decent at the game, a couple bucks each, you could go literally beat the game in 20 or 30 minutes of the arcade, which... Yeah, there's a little soft spot for that, right? <laughs> I was gonna say it's still it's still hard if you don't have the right people. If you tried to solo it, I mean, it, it's been done, but the part I could never solo it. The part that baffles me, yeah, solo is tough. Is I, I was all in the I, I've spent hours playing it, but I didn't realize I never figured out all the moves because even a couple months ago, I was playing one of the games at one of the. Uh, anime arcades and try to play on there and one of the turtles did something like Raphael did his like somersault spin kick I'm like how the heck did that happen <laughs> and they were like oh there's a button combination you can do this and that oh cool how come I never knew that but there's a few few little gems in there I was gonna say that's one thing I think that as kids we never really paid attention to mm-hmm. is you would play the arcade game and it would have a moves list like ever so small it would have a moves list but you never paid attention to that you'd just be doing that you'd be like Oh, how did I do that? And then you'd sit there and try to mimic it. And that's how, like, sometimes you go up to the arcade games and the joystick's just all, like, you know, well, flopping around. And games like that never listed all the moves. They listed the that's basic true. moves. They said jump, attack, move, and that was your directions. Mm-hmm. There was not the, oh, push, jump, and attack, and you do your, your jumping dash or you double jump. Like, there was, they never give the specifics. It was just the basic controls, so. Right. Um, they followed that up with another one, which was Ninja Turtles 3, The Manhattan Project. Which was pretty much the arcade game, but, you know, nine more levels. <laughs> Some new bad guys. Uh, then they moved on to Game Boy 1990, came with Fall of the Foot Clan. I, th- I had that one. I guess I never had a Game Boy, so I didn't get to play that one much, so there's no memories for me there, but... It's hard. <laughs> then they had Ninja Turtles 2 Back from the Sewers. I believe that was also a Game Boy, va- game Boy 1. Then back to the arcade, they had Turtles in Time in 1992. Uh, then they had the Hyperstone Heist, also came out in 1992. Hyperstone Heist? Mm-hmm. I don't know that one. Turtles of the Time arcade one, I remember not loving. <laughs> it was okay, but it was, it was, I mean, it was like, it was like the, the movie almost, because it was, they just had the exact same game of the arcade game and the Manhattan Project, but then they tried to put it through, like, different time periods in history, which, uh, yeah, it, it was fun, but it wasn't as fun as the others. Mm-hmm. I, I bet if you saw the cover of the Hyperstone High Shimmer, it was the one that was straight home was for Genesis and Super Nintendo. Um, it was not a great game either. <laughs> I think that's what some of, I mean, that's also what a lot of the games in the 90s were is they took a brand that people knew and they put it, slapped it. Oh, look at this video game. And then you play it. You're like, yeah, they bought they bought some coders game and then just slapped some licensed content on top of it. Yeah. Oh, here we go. It's got a great game. Why are the Ninja Turtles fighting Contra gorillas in South America? Just go with it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Then we had uh, Ninja Turtles 3, the Radical Rescue in 93, along with uh, Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighter, which I had high hopes for, but it was it was the Street Fighter version of Ninja Turtles, but it just it wasn't wasn't up to par. I don't remember that one either. Really? Where were you? I don't know. Not playing Turtles games, apparently, because like I, I remember the Nintendo ones. And I remember the Game Boy ones, but that's weird. I don't remember that one. And I also remember that the Turtles later on also popped up in some other licensed games, but... I I say we don't remember Tournament Fighters because that was like right around, I want to say it's like Clay Fighters times and uh, uh, the the Dinosaur That's probably what I was doing. I was probably playing Rampage, or not Rampage, um, Primal. Yeah, primal, primal rage. rage. That's what I'm thinking yeah, of. Yeah, I was probably trying. I was probably pr- playing primal rage and clay fighters, and that's why yeah. I didn't play it. And that's why the only thing that the tournament fighter had going for it was it had some of the more obscure Ninja Turtles characters in it, but it was it was not a great game. 
Then they took a break for about 10 years, and once T Turtles had their two or three resurgences, they came out with a game just called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with their newer versions. And then they had Ninja Turtles 2 Battle Nexus, Ninja Turtles 3 Mutant Nightmares. Then they had the Ninja Turtles Mutant Melee in 2005. In 2007, yet another game called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Was that the one that followed the weird CGI movie that they came out with that also wasn't uh, very good? The TMNT? Yeah. Yes. It, it was I, okay, but yeah. Mm. It, yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll, we won't get into that part because this, this is the Yay Turtles podcast. Yeah. Yay Turtles. Uh, then they had the Ninja Turtles smash up in 2009, then Turtles in Time reshelled. And here's where we get back into it if they just took Turtles in Time and then just kind of updated the skins, added a level, and, and updated the graphics. And that was really we all they did. That's them doing the re remastered it for ya. Yeah. Which, yeah, I, I like the fact you could play it on other systems now, but they could have, yeah, yeah. This this new game will hopefully make up for it. Hopefully. Uh, Ninja Turtles Arcade Attack also in 2009. Out of the Shadows in 2013. The Ninja Turtles Training Lair in 2014. Danger of the Ooze in 2014. Mutants in Manhattan in 2016. And then they actually had a little guest appearance spot, which I'm assuming is what you're thinking of in Injustice 2. Well, they also showed up in, like, a, it's like the Nickelodeon's response to Smash Brothers. Um, the Kart Racers? Well, they had, that's for, like, the Mario Kart, so they're oh. in that, but then there's another one. It's like Brawl, some, I don't remember... But it has license, Nickelodeon license things, and the oh. turtle showed up in that as well. That one didn't make my list. We'll have to add that on there. Because <laughs> I, I had Nickelodeon Kart Racers and Kart Racers 2 because they were playable characters in that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, then Shredder's Revenge, which is supposed to come out this year, broke the news. You can, you can already pre order it on Steam. And supposedly it is going to be available on just about all the systems Xbox, Switch, PS5, all that kind of stuff, PC. So. You know, I, I think there'll be a lot of a lot of turtle gamers out there soon. Well, here's the thing too that I was thinking of is it's it's kind of cool. Like we've we've talked about Street Fighter, we've talked about Mortal Kombat. You know, that's those are games that have spanned generations. I never really thought of the Ninja Turtles as spanning generations for gamers. I mean, TV show, yeah, that's one thing. They keep rebranding it and rehashing it. Some with weird animation. We're not going to get into that. You know, I digress. But, you know, thinking about this as you're doing it is they they're kind of still dabbling in reaching out to different generations. You know, they're still playing on the people who played the games when they were younger. Mm -hmm. And yes, this new game might get some criticism because we know how all the youngins look at it and go, those graphics are crap. But I don't know why youngins sound like that. But in my head. Um, that's that's where we go back and go back in our day um, but it's kind of cool because I mean like you know it'll play on it and like maybe it'll make some people think oh this is so retro and then maybe it'll be resurgent because I mean I'm pretty sure well I know that at one point with like you could get the X-Men arcade game on like the Xbox store so maybe they have some of the turtle games on there so maybe it'll, maybe it'll do a resurgence and maybe this will help that developer kind of go okay here's what we want to do some more so i'm kind of excited about this and again like it's crazy to think how much that's spanned mm -hmm. well i think of it, the fact that it's not just nostalgia not even my kids are excited about it. they have the the one-up arcade cabinets that are the miniature arcade cabinets they sell mm -hmm. like walmart and target and stuff like that and she's jenny well you should get one of those I'm like well i would but i don't want to sleep on the couch <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm pretty sure I send you deals on those every once in a while. Mm, but they, I mean, they're cool. They have the the turtles, uh, the arcade game at the store. Just last week, I saw it on there. We could get the Simpsons game or other ones on there. And I I think somebody's missing out on some marketing on that. Of one of those cabinet companies, have your thing, but then have a way that's expandable where you can buy these other games and put it on those cabinets. Right. Because they're big enough that nobody is going to spend a couple hundred bucks repeatedly for things that will fill up a room very fast. Like you can't have nine of those one up cabinets in a normal size bedroom and still like live a normal life. <laughs> <laughs> 
what you got when you just you know plug one in or re- put, put something else and get the other games on. I think there's there's definitely a market for that because it's it is a such and there, there's those fun games and there's just you have some people over and you can play a game for 10 15 minutes and it's okay everybody pushes buttons and even somebody that doesn't know how to play can sit there and just 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 move back and forth and push that a bunch of times cool right <laughs> i mean that's kind of you know that's kind of what we did with um was it your birthday that your wife got you the mm-hmm. yeah we got the i got the old school uh it's it's got 380 old uh, arcade games loaded onto you plug in the tv it's got joysticks and buttons on the front so you get to feel like in the arcade again i'm pretty sure turtles was on that one too at least one of them's on there yeah yeah but that's the thing too is like you know you're talking about the arcade cabinets and it's one thing right to play it holding a controller you know you're sitting there with the controller like you know you're doing this you're like that but it's not the same as holding the joystick and then pushing the buttons Shut up, dude. I know, I know, I know. But you know what I'm talking about. And that's why I think you're right. Like, if they did... I mean, there's tons of people, there's companies out there that will build you arcade cabinets with whatever games you want in them. Mm -hmm. But maybe there is something to get one of those mini stand-ups that you can do in, like, an expansion on. I don't know. That makes sense. There's there's some for the, the button mashing games like these. A, a little controller doesn't doesn't work. Well, and even so, you could buy the controller for the the console itself, like the the joystick controller, you know. And mm. it's still it's it's just not the same. Being like this close to the screen while you're sitting there, yeah. Yeah, and, and they were tough. I mean, those old things they had to take a beating, so they were they were you know built to last because they knew the kids were going to be playing them nonstop. A lot of the joystick controllers you can buy for you know, Xbox and PlayStation. You, you push a little too hard to the left, and it's not going to work for very long. <laughs> well, let's do, let's do this. So last week we talked about nostalgia, going to the roller rink. Obviously, at the roller rink, one of these games was probably there. We know growing up, right? My parents went; they were in a bowling league, so I knew the arcade. You going up to this arcade, you know the you know the cabinet. You know if you're going to play with somebody. You know, which, especially on the ones where it's the four-person joysticks, you knew which one you did not want. Yeah. Because there was one joystick, like I said, that just took a beating and that was sitting there and it didn't register. You're like, I'm pushing over. It's not doing anything. Or I'm punching. It's not doing anything. You never wanted that one. Mm-hmm. Or you find the one that was like, it was a very specific point. You knew that there was one part of the game where you have to be pushing all the way up to the left and you jump off and that, that Donatello controller that doesn't doesn't register. You can't make mm-hmm. that jump. <laughs> And that brings me to my another point that you just brought up is everybody had their favorite turtle because they all played a little bit different. So I'm, I'm kind of hoping that they keep going with that because that makes sense since they're all different weapon styles. Mm-hmm. My favorite was always Donatello. Mine too. Um, Raphael didn't care for because he was too close combat. Michelangelo was okay. Leonardo, eh. But as always, Donatello had to be the one. And like, you know, if you and I went in there, we'd have to have a mild, you know, friendly discussion. <laughs> well, see, that was the point. Is Donatello is my favorite one. But I, when I played, I, uh, I liked Leonardo a lot because he was one of the best attackers for it with the range and his swords. Yeah, Mikey was, I feel like, fast. Faster than the others. He was a little bit faster. And then... The thing Raph had going for was he, Raph had that special move where he could like do a little somersault and a jump flip or something with his side that was uh, uh, made him usable sometimes. <laughs> God, just even just talking about the nostalgia was like you can feel I can I can just you could hear it. You're walking up, you can smell the arcade of stale cigarettes if it's at the bowling alley, and you're just sitting there. You know, as a little kid, you go up and just grab that joystick, you grab that little quarter. You know, you can feel that quarter in your hand and you plunk and that, it in, you hear that noise. That wall of white noise of just... Bing, 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 yep. But you, and you hear the clink of your quarter. And all of a sudden you hear it hit the coin, the coin return because it didn't go through the first time. So you have to do it again because for some reason that always had to work with those machines. Or you had to use like the second slot. <laughs> And then each game had its own noises for when things are ready to go. Mm-hmm. So I can still think of now, I can still hear it right now when you put the quarter in of cowabunga cowabunga (laughs) (laughs) oh man 
And I do like that they're keeping up. I'm looking at some of the screenshots of the Shredder's Revenge game right now, too. And they're they're staying right on par with it, because how did you know you were getting to a higher level in the old Turtle games? Because the foot soldiers were a different color uniforms <laughs> and had different weapons. Oh, those are the yellow ones. They got machine guns. And sure enough, in the screenshots on here, there's uh, there's some purple ones. They're playing one level against uh, Bebop and Rocks. There's some pink ones up there fighting against Splinter. Uh, then there is some um, some orange ones doing something. I don't know what the orange ones got going on. Then there's some yellow and pink ones. They're actually working at the sushi and pizza hut, so they got some work aprons on. And there's another one that looks like it's in a kitchen, and there's blue foot soldiers, and they're all wearing chef hats and holding mixing bowls. <laughs> Okay, they were. I mean, it was. I, I feel like it was when it came out. It seemed like it was so cheesy and random and off the walls, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like this is ridiculous, but they kind of just went with it, and everything mm-hmm. was a little comical, a little over the top, a little whimsical, a little bit like, oh yeah, sure, okay, let's just do a joke with it. And I, have you watched the uh, the toys that made us on the Ninja Turtles? I have not. No. That one's a great one to add to your to-do list. And anyone else listening, if you if you like the toys that made us on Netflix, great series of shows, they do their hour-long segments about some of the history of toys, and they did one on Ninja Turtles. Give you the whole history of how the Ninja Turtles came to be. Eastman and Laird's comic books and the guys meeting how they worked worked, worked with the, uh, the different companies and finally got on the shelves and just defied all the odds to make one of the most successful franchises around. And, and it's... You get some of the backstory that I, I don't want to ruin it here because one, I'm not going to remember 100, percent so I'll probably get it wrong. <laughs> It'll be those. Let me tell you a joke. Well, the punchline was uh, something about a pizza. Uh, yeah. Anyway, but it, it's a, it's a, one of those fantastic documentaries, and I will admit that I got a little teary eyed a couple times during it too. There's there's some feels that go on with that. Okay. And, That's and the nostalgia button again. Hmm. And like here's something here's when they did the toys and stuff like that. They had to do things where they were turning the original comic books that were dark, gritty murder turtles into a kids show, and they couldn't tell them apart because the original turtles all had the same headband. So that's where they came up with the different color headbands as a way to just tell them apart. And then they had to find a way to make crime fighting vigilantes family friendly fun for kids. So you know, okay, let's let's add some of this and add some of that. <laughs> <laughs> and some of the characters that they came up with. That's what I'm kind of excited to to see which bosses they put in. Obviously, Bebop and Rocksteady. That's a that's a staple. But are they going to put in some of the other ones? Um, oh my gosh, I forgot his name. You got the, with the guy that's a fly. Then you got the guy that's a bunny. Baxter Stockman, Yusaki yeah, Jimbo. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I. Well, you know, Krang's probably in there somewhere. I, it's just, it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, obviously Shredder's in there because it's called Shredder's Revenge. So, but it's it's going to be interesting because it's, it's just it's just one of those ones I can go back to right now. Like, you know, you're talking about the foot soldiers, the different colors. It was always one of those ones where everybody had the same conversation. If you're sitting there playing with somebody or friends, somebody was going to say, oh, I don't like these guys. When like the dark purple ones came out or something like that. Mm, the one or, with like, the giant hammers. Yeah, or the guy. Yeah, the guys, the big beefy guys that walk all weird, and you're like, oh, I, somebody was somebody. If you're playing with them or yourself, would say, oh, I hate these guys, and then you sit there and start button mashing and get a quarter ready because you knew your continues were up. Well, I would say this. I, you know that I'm much more of a uh, run in guns a blazing than sit back and strategize sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I did leave, lose a lot of quarters because this, in the side-scrolling fashion, those games always had a few bad guys that you literally, okay, you had to go punch them twice and then run away while they do their special move and then run behind them, punch them twice, then run away with their special move. So you could beat them flawlessly, but it'd take you like 10 minutes. Or you could just die five or six times and stand next to them and punch until you got worked up a sweat. Like, <laughs> Well, I think that's for the game. that, Like you said, that was the quarter eater because when you died, what happened? You would fall back in on the level and everybody would get knocked over and if there were weaker enemies they would you know just flash off the screen so you were doing damage by when you were dying so that was some so that was sometimes the strategy to do is sit there and go die oh cool we took out that guy mm-hmm. here's my quarter <laughs> an eye for an eye shredder take that <laughs> 
Uh, some of the other rumors swirling about this game that have me jazzed of hopefully it's not just going to be a one and done port game, but there's a good chance there might be some online playability. Ooh, so you could be okay. able to join and play with people, you know, have a full squad of turtles because it's a four, up to a four player game. But mm-hmm. most of us don't have four people and four controllers sitting in a house. They're going to play in the same game. So be able to jump <laughs> online and play four turtles with other people. Sounds like a jam. And I don't know if it's going to happen, but since it is just a 2D side-scrolling game, it would not be hard for them to add other characters. Right. A a monthly add-on or some sort of bonus or achievements to unlock. I mean, you could put countless characters there because nothing about the game dynamics change as long as you have that character and what they can do in their hit radius. You could, you know... (laughs) <laughs> just drop it into the game you know i'm sure with coding there's a lot more that goes into it than that but for the basic terms it's it's not like if you're adding characters and something like apex levens or overwatch where the entire mechanic of the game changes because of this new player as long as one of the new characters come in doesn't have some crazy super move that obliterates every bad guy then yeah whatever sure let's get a casey jones in there let's get a mutagen man let's get a mantis let's let's see what goes on they might also be able to like expand it too mm-hmm you know, do do different missions or, you know, do because I know some games they do, they'll do like weekly missions and like unlock something real quick that you can play for a week and then it's done, you know, mm. type of thing. So it'll be it's going to be interesting to see. And like you said, if this, you know, opens the, the door for this company to dive back into more nostalgia, you know, maybe we're going to see an actual Contra reboot that's worth playing because that, that's been tried countless times and they've. Uh, kind of failed honestly to to this day that original contra game is still one of my favorite games to play (laughs) see i mean there's 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 a land of opportunity there for that and maybe this turtles game will open it and there's never been another contra game that i've wanted to play again (laughs) i know i mean like i said they've they've tried to reboot it a couple times especially going back with the old school like graphics and it's just it's not the same but playing on nostalgia like this it might work it might. I just think they don't go too far. That's why I think where the, the not drastic changes is uh, it, they do something like this. If it looks like one of the old games, it's 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 much prettier, much cleaner, much brighter, much faster, much smoother. But if you saw it side by side with a screenshot of the old game, it's like, oh, these are the same types. Of, okay, this is this on here. If you put <laughs> this it next, is the same game. <laughs> yeah, and it's. Uh, I don't. I, I for some reason I don't know why this hit me like. I saw this trailer and I've just been giddy about it. I haven't been giddy about many games. I'm like, oh, that'll be cool. Try that. Oh, that'll be, that looks like it'll be neat. But this one, for some reason, it just, I'm like, oh, this is going to be rad. <laughs> Radical. And it's not going to hurt your eyes as much as the old school games anyway. Yeah, they did have a little bit of the whole, you know. Well, even still. Seizure like, inducing. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, even still now playing it, like when we played it on your um, emulator or whatever you want to call it. Some of those are like, we had to take a step back. Go, oh, my eyes. <laughs> You know, well, well, I realize I don't know if it's just my age, but uh, I I can't play games on my t- like on my TV downstairs. I got a couple years back got a big sixty five inch one hundred and twenty hertz refresh rate TV, and the big screen with the fast refresh rate, I can't play games on it. If I'm hmm. down there for twenty minutes, I'm nauseous and I have a headache and I can't handle it. I can sit in front of another TV for hours, not a problem. But you get that high refresh rate on some of those games and. I tried doing it with Destiny. I tried doing it with Overwatch. The arcade one I can still do it okay with, but I think it's also because those games that's you don't play for terribly long. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know what it is. Like it's it it just doesn't work for me. It makes me upset because I'm pretty <laughs> sure whatever TV I get next is going to have that too, and I don't want to get sick playing video games. <laughs> oh man, my old age. They did fix it with Oculus. With the Oculus uh, Two, I can put that on and I can wear that and not feel bad. Where the Oculus One, I had about 15 minutes in me before I needed to go keel over. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm weak and old. <laughs> Not ready for the metaverse. <laughs> oh man. Just plug it into my brain already. My eyes aren't any good. <laughs> So, yeah, they're also playing to your old age. Hey, Gramps, can't play those high res games? Check out this one. <laughs> well, you know, we, we, we are the, the target market for nostalgia right now. And I think somebody said it That's best true. with the whole, the whole Super Bowl halftime show the other day. Somebody on 
social media had that brilliant take and like finally finally they put together a halftime show for all us young people instead all the oh mm-hmm. <laughs> that's us now <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah especially when you go to like a grocery store and you hear songs you're like yeah oh no yeah. this is how my parents felt when i was a kid <laughs> But it, but it is still funny, though, because some, there'll be some stuff on there that you're like, man, there's some uh, racy lyrics or some, some pretty heavy stuff going on here in this dentist office right now. But I guess I guess Nirvana is considered classic rock now. Mm-hmm. So cool. Okay. It works. Mm-hmm. Oh, Metallica on the adult contemporary station. That'll work. Yeah. Nothing else matters. Totally good for the dentist. Right. <laughs> give me a fuel. Give me fire. Give me that which I desire. Ooh, yeah. Novocaine. <laughs> Man, we just tangent the way the heck off that one. Nostalgia. That's what happens, man. Yeah. Memories. But uh, what do you think coming up? Let us know at Good Geekish Show. Uh, were you a fan of the old Ninja Turtles games? Because everyone was a fan of the Turtles. If you weren't, just turn around right now. Just kidding. Um, just kidding. But do yourself a favor. Go watch the toys that made us for the Ninja Turtles. Go watch the trailer for Shredder's Revenge. And tell me you are not jazzed for this game to come out. <laughs> <laughs> And if you are, what's your favorite turtle to play as? You know, drop that down there too. Because I'm, ex- I'm excited to know. I, I, I know a lot of people that I played with back in the day weren't fans of Raphael. So it's going to be kind interesting. of a jerk. Yeah. And, and keep in mind, you could also throw the curveball because for the first time, Splinter is a playable character and April O'Neil also a playable character. Mm hmm. So, which one are you going to be? Let us know. At Geek Geekish, new Turtles game coming out. Chocked full of nostalgia fun, but uh, this is the Get Geekish Podcast, and uh, we'll talk at you next week. Hey, y'all. It's pizza time, dude. Mm. Hey, thanks for listening. We truly appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast. Find us on social media at Get Geekish, and if you want more podcasts, we got plenty of them.